Welcome. Glad you could all join us today. Um, we're going to go over some uh, the nuances of navigating to uh, finding offers you're interested in, checking out with them, and how you're actually going to receive those offers so you can use them for your nonprofit. Um, so we've got a, a, a full staff uh, ready to uh, go through this with you today. So let me introduce them. Oh, oops. Uh, sorry. Ha, here we go. Um, I'm Corey Abood. I'm a manager for our, our client services department. Um, along with me today is Kelly Garrett, uh, the associate manager for the TechSoup Clients client services department. Um, we also have with us Rebecca Brown, who's a supervisor uh, of the TechSoup Client Services Department. We're all TechSoup Client Services uh, Department staff. There's the theme here. Um, and we also have uh, Alicia Sudam, uh, one of our valuable leads that does a lot of the internal support for our staff, helping them as they help you when you contact us. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get right into it today. Our topic today is requesting and receiving nonprofit offers through TechSoup. So, First, uh, I should mention any questions um, so that we can track along with them and so that the rest of the participants can see the questions, see the answers. Um, we ask that you use the Q&A box uh, instead of the chat. Chat's great, but with the Q&A, we can track along and make sure that we're addressing anything that comes in there. And we can also share that with everybody else again for visibility. Um, so you'll see that little icon here. Um, that's the one to use, Q&A. Okay, here we go. So uh, obviously, step one of uh, utilizing offers through TechSoup is to go to our website, TechSoup.org. So what you see here is a screenshot of our landing page. Um, now from this point, um, I'm going to show you how to navigate to the different offers we have. Uh, a couple different areas of the website that might come in handy if you have questions about offers, uh, or need more information. Um, so uh, first things first, you see uh, this very subtle, uh, huge black arrow pointing to product catalog. That's obviously where you wanna go because that link houses all the products, services, offers, everything that's available through TechSoup, you're gonna be able to find it there. So when you click on that, you'll see this screen. Okay. So three more subtle arrows over here, and you see that when I click that, it actually opens up these three drop-down areas here. So you have donor or company, you have category, and you have hardware. So if you uh, know the product you're interested in, like you maybe you heard from a, a friend who's also working at a nonprofit that uses TechSoup, and you know that they have Intuit QuickBooks, that we have Intuit QuickBooks. If you know the product maker, um, Donor or company is the dropdown you'd want to use because it actually expands and shows each and every provider we partner with. And you can get to their programs by just clicking on their name. So if you open that up, you just scroll down to eyes and you'd see a big old Intuit. Click that and that's how you get going, uh, getting the QuickBooks product that you're looking for in that example. If you don't know the donor, if you're not familiar with you know, who provides the solution you're looking for, but you know what you need the solution to do. Um, category is the is the uh, category is the category that you'd want to select um, because what you can do from there is you can browse by the kind of product you're looking for. So there's categories like uh, accounting, uh, HR, um, different categories within, so you can start there and sort of whittle down your search for what you really need um, if you don't know the exact provider. So that's a handy one to use. Um, and then we have a dedicated uh, hardware uh, link right there that takes you directly to all the various hardware offers available through TechSoup. Okay, so next um, you're gonna see on the right hand side, next to product catalog, you see the white area. To the right of that, um, in black with white letters, services, community, resources, and help. Okay, so these are these are parts of the website that, again, you might find useful if you're looking to um, interact with our existing uh, member community about products they use. Maybe they have some suggestions uh, for the solution you need. 
Um, if you want to get to webinars about what we do here, like this one, I'll show you where that is too. So how about I just go and uh, we'll take a look here. So services, uh, TechSoup offers uh, various services, um, all of which can be found here. So as you see, when you click on services, it's a bit of a drop down menu. It expands in gray. You'll see help desk, you'll see Office 365 managed IT. There's a lot of uh, technical solutions because we at TechSoup uh, are not directly providers of tech support. You know, it, it, it sort of falls outside the scope of, of what we, we do on a day to day. But in an effort to, you know, make sure that, you know, you're all getting the nonprofit uh, support you need. We partner with people that do specialize in those kinds of things, and you'd find those services in this drop down. Next, we have the community drop down. Uh, we have our community home, uh, which uh, encompasses all of those things you see beneath that, including upcoming events and webinars. Um, so you can, uh, if you have an interest in uh, seeing more of these, uh, more of us helping you out as well as other teams. Uh, we're not the only team that produces informative webinars. Check it out. See if anything catches your eye. And, and if, if you're so interested, sign up. Uh, we also have our forums. It's a good place to uh, post some questions that, that, that it's sort of led by our community. Um, and so you can engage with other nonprofits that um, maybe do something similar to what your nonprofit does. Um, get advice, offer advice. Um, get to know other uh, members of the TechSoup community. We also have our dedicated uh, page for libraries. Uh, libraries uh, are, are somewhat unique in the nonprofit sector uh, in how, um, you know, how TechSoup uh, goes about qualifying them and, and different eligibility things. You can find out uh, a whole lot of information about libraries specifically by going to that library link there. And to the right of that, we have resources. So we have articles and how to's pretty self explanatory, but you can find uh, we've got quite a back catalog of articles and how to's. Um, so if you're stuck with an Excel sheet issue, it's worth giving this a look, seeing if we have something there that might, you know, get you out of that situation, get you moving on with your day. We also have our blogs um, and we have the events and webinars archived. So if you really liked a previous webinar, that's where you're going to go to find it. Um, so click that. We, we are pretty quick. I, I forget the exact turnaround time, but certainly within the same week, we get the webinars up there. I think it might even be the same day or the next day. Uh, in any case, if you like a, a webinar, you want to relive the experience, that's where you're going to go to do that. Uh, lastly, in this bar, um, to the right of that, you'll see help. If you click that, it actually takes you to this page, um, which is uh, one of our, our newer um, uh, attempts at making sure that you're getting all the support you need. And this is uh, support.techsoup.org. Um, many of you, that if you use other online services, you may find that um, you're directed to use their knowledge base um, as a starting point to sort of sort out issues. This is our, our, our attempt at providing that experience. And so you see those different categories. We have getting started for, I know there were some newer folks um, that were in the chat earlier. Um, that could be a good one to check out. Um, we also have offer availability, requests, licensing. A lot of the more common uh, questions we get, a lot of the more common issues that you you may run into that you need to overcome. Um, we've tried to build up a, a knowledge base of articles here uh, that you can use anytime, whether we're here or not, this is always online ready for you, okay? Um, so one other thing while I'm here, and you'll notice it in other screenshots throughout this presentation, there's this help, this this uh, black bubble down here with a with a chat bubble icon. If you click that, it actually, that's how you engage our staff in direct live chat support when we're there. When we're not there, you can still click that, and it's an FAQ uh, that's searchable, and it also will present information to you based on the page that you're on in that moment. So it's handy. Um, so whether we're here or not, you've got some options. So moving back to our offers and, and how to go about getting those. Um, 
we have uh, landing pages for all of our, our products. So I mentioned if you heard from a friend, like, hey, TechSoup offers QuickBooks. And you're like, great, that's exactly what I need. And you were to search by donor or company or category, you might come across this. This is the landing page for the program as a whole. So what this does is sort of gives you a top line view of uh, the intentions behind this program, what's offered here. Um, and if you uh, click on uh, view program details, uh, as indicated by the giant arrow, um, you'll see this. It expands and it gives you more in-depth, um, still fairly top line information, but it'll sort of give you a sense for, for uh, you know, how this program works. Programs through TechSoup vary depending on who we're partnering with. There's different parameters for all of them. Um, some are very similar, some are very distinctly different. Um, and so this is a good a starting place to understand how the program works, what is offered. Um, and it's also where you can go to see all the different offers within that program. And so uh, let's say you click on one of those offers. I'll go to the next one here. Okay, what you'll land on is actually an offer page. So in this case, um, I sort of moved away from into it for the sake of variety. We're on GrantStation right now. So you have our product page, AKA offer page. And this is the more granular details about this exact offer. In this case, the GrantStation uh, grant writing product that we offer. Um, so on here, you'll see a description that gives you a, a sense of specifically what you can use this for, how it could be helpful to you, uh, benefits of your organization, Lots of other details. I wanted to point out specifically, you see there's, there's we have description here on the left-hand side. Uh, to the right of that, membership details. And then at the very end to the right, rules, eligibility, and restrictions. Now, all of these, these links provide specific and useful information about this product uh, that'll let you know I mean, sometimes how you can use the product. In many cases, there might be a, a renewal situation. This will explain exactly what is needed and expected um, so that you can flawlessly renew each year that you use this product. Um, so let's go on to the next so I can show you further. So there you go. With GrantStation, for this program, we're offering membership details that explain, you know, for example, public library use. Eligible libraries must request GrantStation for back office use or other administrative purposes by staff only. So sometimes, again, there's unique parameters for each program and each product or offer within that program. This is where you'd learn about those things, those different aspects. Over here, rules, eligibility, and restrictions. So if you're interested in this, um, you may or may not know that um, each program through TechSoup has a varying eligibility uh, depending on a variety of factors. Uh, it can be budget, it can be the type of organization you are, um, it, you know, a, a lot of different factors. And so this sort of gives you a, a sense of what to expect as far as your eligibility. Uh, should you pursue this product, how many you can get per year, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, I'll show you this next one. This is also a product page. And here it's a little different. So in the last one, we had membership details. Here we have details and service costs. Again, each program, each project within the program is set up uh, you know, in partnership with whoever's providing that. And they may wanna have specific things available to the public so that uh, you're informed about the things that they feel you need to know about um, to pursue this product and use it well. So details, service costs, A little bit different than the last one. Same idea, uh, but again, you can find out pretty much all you need to know about how to pursue this product, if it's something that you're going to be eligible for, what it can do for you uh, by using the information available to you here on these offer pages. Okay, and uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Garrett, who's going to talk to you uh, a little bit about admin fees um, and uh, some of the structure we have around the pricing. So Kelly, I'm gonna turn, uh, well, give me the cue and I'll hit the page. Perfect.
Perfect. Thank you so much, Corey. Um, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to explain some more stuff here. Um, just in case any of you are missing it, um, in the webinar chat, I have put a little bit of information in there. Um, specifically, one was about the Grant Station promotion that we have coming up. Um, well, it's already next week. Um, so if anyone's interested in Grant Station, um, there's a promotion coming up and there's a great landing page and a great webinar that's happening tomorrow if you're interested. So um, make sure you're keeping an eye on that webinar chat for extra infos. We're going through this. Um, one thing I did want to also call out just really quickly um, is that, so you are aware, uh, TechSoup.org is TechSoup US. So it is for US-based organizations. Um, if you are located outside of the United States, you won't be able to request products or services through here. Um, but if you have a US-based location, this is the place you can go. And I will be pointing out um, later in my part of this presentation that there is a place for our non-US organizations to go. We do like to serve everyone around the world. We've just got different websites um, for the different countries and regions. So just calling that out in case we have any um, non-US organizations that are going to go and maybe try. I don't want you to get frustrated or run into any roadblocks. Um, we are serving pretty much everywhere. Um, you just got to go to the right website. So moving forward, um, Grant Station, again, highlighting it since we do have the promotion. Um, right now, the regular admin fee is displayed. On every single product page that is a um, in the catalog, that's something that you can add to your cart and check out, you will see an admin fee always listed there in red. Um, you might have, see a landing page, so some of our validation services um, Mondi Security is like one that we just recently partnered with. If you go there, it's actually a landing page with a link to take you to their portal. So not every single time you click on a donor's name or company will you get um, a regular landing page, uh, or sorry, a, a, a page with um, items to click and see admin fees. Some of them will maybe be links to the partner's website where you'll actually go directly with them and work with them and you're just getting validated through us. Um, but for the ones that do have admin fees that you add to your cart, check out, get directly through TechSoup, you will see that listed in red. It's always listed here right above the orange button that will say log in if you're not logged in, or it will say add to cart if you're logged in. Um, it's a great way to go and get quotes. Um, so you'll look at it and, you know, if you're going to get Grand Station, you only need one. So it would just be one with an admin fee of $199, but say there was a product or a service you wanted five of, you would just take that admin fee and multiply it by five. And that would give you what it will cost. Um, some products we are required by uh, state law to charge a um, uh, sales tax for. This is usually hardware products and it's something that we can absolutely refund for an organization. But by law, I believe it's called the Amazon Commerce Law. Um, we do have to charge the sales tax and then we can refund it. We can't just block it at checkout. Even though you're a nonprofit, even if you've got your state sales tax certificate, um, we can refund it, but we can't block it. So usually the admin fee is what you get, but you know, it was a, a checkout, double check to see if there's any um, sales tax. And at the end of this uh, presentation, we will have a slide explaining how you can get in touch with the client services team if you do need to request a refund for your sales tax. Um, but this is the best place to go. Um, once you're on here, uh, next slide, please. Um, on this page as well, so something else to keep in mind is, as Corey pointed out, there are these three tabs of information. Um, always really important to make sure that you're going through each tab to review everything that you um, have available to review. You're picking the correct product. Uh, it's going to work for you and your organization before you request it. Um, something that a lot of folks miss um, is our products that say access to discounted rates is referring to a special kind of product where you're um, checking out with TechSoup for a small, usually a small fee, and it's going to then give you a coupon code, a link, something along those lines. It's going to allow you to get access to a discounted rate um, with the partner that provided it. So for the example, this is Zoom. Zoom offers a 50% discount for their um, pro plans. Um, or sorry, for their one plans, it's either pro or business. 
as you can see on here, I've put a little box down below um, that highlights where it calls out that they're going, you're going to get a 50% discount, but you have to pay the TechSoup admin fee of $18 to receive that 50% discount. And so some folks will check out and think the $18 is the entire fee they have to pay. That's all they need to pay to get Zoom. And it's not the case. It's you're actually going to check out get the el your eligibility is getting conf confirmed, and then you'll be able to access a 50% discount that you'll pay directly to Zoom. So anything that says access to discounted rates is you're paying TechSoup an admin fee, and then you're paying a discounted rate to the partner that's providing the product or service. So something to really keep an eye on. We have folks that just get really excited when they see Zoom because it's a very popular product since the pandemic. Um, add it to the cart, check out, and then are bummed when they realize, oh no, like, it's not just $18, it's $18. And then I'm also paying Zoom these additional fees. So always make sure you're check, taking a look at the product name. You're going through these three tabs and anything that has access to discounted rates, the um, discounted rates usually explained underneath that first paragraph or that first uh, header description. It's usually the last or second paragraph in the description and it gives you a breakdown. And then you see it calls out, see the details and service cost tab for more information. That's when you want to click on that middle tab that I've highlighted there, and you'll see a, a more detailed breakdown. It sometimes will give you links, as you see here, um, the pro plan or the business plan. Clicking on that, it will take you to the partner page where you can then see what 50% discount is. Um, so this is also one of the things of uh, I also get asked all the time, well, it's a discounted rate. Am I like, I saw a better deal somewhere. That might be the case for like um, uh, promotions that the partner is running. It's usually not a, like a guaranteed of like the entire year. So it's usually like, oh, you can get maybe a better rate for a month or two. Um, but it's not usually the entire year. We strive and make sure and, and have contracts with our partners to ensure we are offering stuff at the lowest uh, possible rate on the market. So even if you maybe see something that's a 70% discount, it's not 70% for a whole year. It's like 70% for three months. And that's not as good of a savings as getting 50% off for an entire year. So something to keep in mind is that we do do that research. We do work with our partners to ensure we're not, um, you know, above a different discount or promotion. Um, but here and there, you might see something that looks a little bit better, but it's got to look at it for long term versus the short term. And you'll see that it's um, a better savings. It's something we always try and strive and put in our contract. So um, something to keep in mind whenever you're looking at these kinds of products. We do have quite a few. Um, and Zoom is probably one of our most popular access to discount rates out there. Because again, I'm that's how we're doing our presentation right now. It's pretty useful software. Awesome. Next slide, please. So this... So I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. You know, if something you want to look at um, after the webinar, uh, we do send out our slide deck. We do send out this recording. So you're more than welcome to come back and read through this if you'd like. Um, the summary, though, is that TechSoup's a nonprofit. We're a 501c3 public charity, just like everybody who's qualified. Um, we, you know, as a nonprofit ourselves, have our own limited resources. And so, you know, I've had the question before of like, why are you even charging a fee? Why aren't you just giving this out for free to other nonprofits. And it's like, well, we have to be able to, you know, support the sector. And to do that, we do need to charge some of these fees. Right now, the admin fees you're paying for um, or paying on our website help uh, us support you with webinars like this one. This webinar right here was supported by your admin fees that you paid on the website. So, you know, there's that. Um, it also helps us go out and try to partner with other companies, bring in more folks um, in, things along those lines that's, you know, it's how we support the nonprofit sector. It's how we support you. When you call the client services team, you know, your admin fee helps get someone on the phone so that we could, you know, afford to pay them and everything. So really appreciate everyone that understands about our administrative fees. We always ensure that it's the lowest on the market. As I said, uh, discounted rates, for sure, we're always doing that. Um, and then also the admin fees in general, we've pre we have guarantees with our partners that they're not changing the price on their website to permanently be lower than ours. Ours will always be the lowest on the market. It's guaranteed. Um, if you find that that's not the case, more than welcome to reach out to us. A lot of times it's there's a slightly different version or if there's something that's older going on, things along those lines. Because we're a nonprofit, 
we understand the need to be conservative with money, the need to make sure that we're not overspending. And we're here for you for that. You know, we're, we're just trying to make sure that we can support everybody. We're not trying to make a profit off of you because we're all nonprofits. Great. Next slide, please. So um, requesting an offer. So thinking back on that Zoom page, you're ready to look at it. You've reviewed everything. You get that it's an access to discounted rates. You're ready to check out. You want that Zoom discount. You're good to go. So some of some folks on here might be um, participating with multiple nonprofits, and they've gotten several of them on TechSoup, and they're an agent or representative for each one of those organizations. You can be the representative for as many organizations as you want us to on TechSoup, so long as you're actually part of them, you're requesting products for them, you're supporting them, you're not using their account for some other reason. So if you are a consultant, if you're the type of person that's volunteered all over the place, um, and you've got multiple organizations associated to your uh, TechSoup account, before you place the request, first thing you want to do is go into your account details. Um, in the top right corner of the website, there is the login button. Um, right now you'll see, once after you log in, it turns into a circle with an icon. You'll see that in the top right corner of this screenshot, there's a little person icon. You click on that to access your account. Once you're in your account, you wanna just make sure that you are clicking on the little bubble next to the name of the organization you want to be active so that when you add it to your cart, add a product to your cart and check out, you're adding it for that organization. You're requesting it for that organization because each organization has its own eligibility. It has its own quantity allotment. Um, and also we have some terms of use policies I'll go over later about not sharing products. So it is important to make sure you're requesting for the correct nonprofit that you have registered and qualified, and you're not um, just using one organization's account to request for all the organizations you have out there. So once you've clicked this active button and it's active, uh, next slide, please. That is when you're going to see on the product page, the add to cart button and right underneath it, you'll see four and my account's called test test. Um, I don't run TechSoup. TechSoup's not on TechSoup, so I have a test account here. Um, but you'll see the quantity is there where you can change it from one to two. Um, Zoom only lets you request one per year, so you wouldn't be able to do that. But say it was a product that you could request multiple of, you could update the quantity. Then you click add to cart when you're ready. And again, you'll see it says four test test. That's the organization you'd be requesting it for. So that's where you're, if you're like, oh shoot, I just went from that page. Did I activate the right one? Right there for you. You don't have to go back to your account details. Um, once you add, click the add to cart, um, that is when you're going to want to then click on that cart icon that's in the top right corner. You'll see it has the little orange button or little orange bubble next to it. It will show you a number of how many items you have in your cart. Um, once in there, this is where you can update the total. So if you do change the quantity from one to say three, you need to make sure you click update totals that I've circled there for you so that it saves. If you just click check out, it won't actually save the total. And then you'll be like, why is there only one here? It's because you didn't click update totals first and then check out. Um, other things to keep in mind with the cart are if you're running into any issues, like it's just not going through, you're getting weird error messages, try doing the clear cart option um, and then re-adding the product that you want to check out with. That sometimes helps if there's any cookie issues or, or something weird's being pulled from your cache and cookie stuff on your browser, that can sometimes help. Um, additionally, something to keep in mind is that adding something to your cart does not guarantee you that it's yours. If say we have a product go out of stock and you've got that product in your cart, just because it's in your cart doesn't mean we saved you a license or we saved you a coupon code or whatever the product or service is offering. You will then, when you try to check out, get a message saying it's out of stock, you can't request it. At that point, clear your cart, periodically keep checking back on the product page and then re-add it once it's back to um, available and not out of stock. So a couple of nuances to the cart to keep in mind. Um, you also have that remove button. If say you just want to remove um, one item, it's got like a bunch of items listed. We do have a remove option as well. Um, so a couple of different things you can poke around here. I've, I recommend to new members, add a couple of things to your cart. Um, you don't have to check it, go through all the way through checkout, but just kind of practice adding stuff, going in, removing it, clearing the cart, seeing how it all functions so that when you are ready to go, you can just 
hit the ground running with uh, going through checkout. Perfect. Uh, next slide, please. So once you're ready to go, you're going to request um, the product. This first step is the agreements. Agreements are really important to read through. There's some really good information that's put there um, a lot of the times. Um, and it does call out some things that you should be aware of. Like right here, it does call out once again that you're paying TechSoup for access to a discounted rate and you will be going to Zoom to pay that discounted rate. We have some other products like um, QuickBooks Made Easy. That's a support service that helps train people to use QuickBooks. It doesn't actually include the QuickBooks product. So there's a disclaimer on that agreement that says, I understand that this is just the support service and I'm not getting the QuickBooks uh, product as well. Stuff along those lines. So again, really important to make sure we're thoroughly reading the offer details on the product page and then these agreements before checking out because it might call out something that you're like, oh shoot, I didn't realize that. Um, and we don't want you to go all the way through checkout, provide money, and then realize you got something you didn't want. That's always the worst on a personal level and then also on, on the company-wide level. Um, once you've agreed to it, you read everything, you click that agree button, and then you click continue to move on to step two. Perfect. So on this page, it's a little confusing. It's something we've been working on for quite a few years. Um, shipping. So shipping physical products is only for our hardware. Anything that's software, a service, and access to a discounted rate, we don't ship out CDs or disks or flash drives for you to install the products or the software. It will always be through a fulfillment email where you're going to get it electronically fulfilled. You'll access it. Kind of like how when you go to Best Buy, um, you would, you know, you're trying to buy some software and they don't actually give you a CD anymore. It's usually just like an activation code that you get on that little cardboard piece. So we don't mail you a cardboard thing with a, with a code on it. We just email you whatever information, whether it's a URL link, um, you know, for registration, whether it's a coupon code, all of that's done electronically. The only thing that's going out is hardware. Now, the confusing part is that on this page, we always show the shipping information and if you're not getting, even if you're getting software and you're not getting hardware, you're going to see that. And sometimes it confuses folks and they think, oh, I'm getting something physical in the mail and I can also expedite the shipping and all that. You can ignore anything to do with the shipping address and the shipping speed, unless it's like a laptop from a refurbished hardware uh, products or something along those lines, because we won't be physically shipping you anything um, unless it's a laptop, a printer, something along those lines. Um, the other piece, the one piece of information to check on this page is the email address. The email address is what we refer to as the organization's email. And the organization email is where um, all billing and fulfillment information is sent. So it's very important to make sure your TechSoup account is up to date. Um, the login email is your login email for your member account. The organization email is a contact email on your organization's account. So the email you log in with to TechSoup could be different than the organization email. Maybe you put the same one for both places, but they're two separate things for two separate purposes. So something to keep in mind is if you look at that and that's wildly off, you definitely want to click that change email and it's going to take you to um, your organization details in your account. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, hmm. Oh, actually, that will be a slide later, but I will be showing you later where the detail is in the organization details, where that email is listed, where you can edit it. Um, it is important, as I said, to make sure you have the correct email address listed. Um, otherwise, you might miss uh, notifications about needing payment, um, renewal notifications, um, the fulfillment email with your steps on how to access something. Um, so make sure it's, you know, if, if you don't use info at techsoup.org, you know, that's pretty generic, and you use me would be, you know, Garrett at techsoup.org. Make sure it's one that you're actually going to get the email to, and it's not just something that is not is not monitored or you don't have access to. Um, and again, can be the same or different from your login. 
once you've decided look to over that make sure the email address is good if the shipping needs to be changed for a hardware product that's good you move on to step three and in step three we do have three payment options we currently have credit or debit card um that's usually the quickest way to receive your product if you provide a credit or debit card um that usually fulfills once we get uh, once you enter that payment information within three business days if not with for 24 hours um, we always like to say three business days because you never know with systems and, you know, with the products, some things can vary slightly, but it's usually within a day that we send it out. We try to do fulfillment several times a day in the morning, in the afternoon. Um, so it's usually pretty quick that you'll get your fulfillment as long as you provided the payment at checkout. Um, electronic checks, the next option. So um, that is where you can enter your banking information. Um, you would then see it's usually three business days for the banks to communicate with each other and then it gets fulfilled. So that one's not as fast. It's still pretty quick for the fulfillment, but if you're in a hurry, I'd recommend using the debit card instead of trying to connect the banks. Additionally, electronic checks um, also uh, have a limit of $1,500. So if you are making a purchase that's over $1,500, Again, credit or debit card would be best, or we do accept physical checks. You are welcome to mail the checks to our uh, headquarters in San Francisco. Um, it is listed, uh, once you check out, if you do pick that as an option, we do give the address um, for San Francisco where you can send it. This is the slowest way to do it because first off, you have to have the check get to us by the mail carrier. Once the mail carrier delivers it, um, since the pandemic, we've been a mostly remote um, team and company, uh, so we only have some that goes in periodically to the office to pick up checks and process them. So it's usually once a week that we have those checks picked up, reviewed, applied to a request. So that's the longest one. If, if you're in a hurry, I would not recommend mailing a check. Um, one of the other two options would be better, but all three are totally valid and will totally accept um, whatever your organization needs. Because I do know there's some organizations out there like libraries that need to send physical checks. There's some folks that need to use the corporate credit cards, you know, so we want to make sure it's available. All, all three options are available. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that we do see sometimes um, payments coming through third parties like bill.com and things like that. We aren't officially partnered with anybody, so be very careful about trying to use a third party um, unless it's to like cut us a physical check and send it to us like some companies do. Uh, usually recommend sticking to these three options that you directly provide the payment um, since we're not partnered with um, those third party um, payment processing companies like bill.com. Uh, we are, sorry, take that back. We're partnered with them in some nonprofit aspects, but for our own purposes on our website for charges and for processing and seeing payment, we're not quite there yet for offering, offering like PayPal or bill.com. Okay, perfect. So once you go uh, put in your payment information or say mail check, you click place request. Um, next slide, please. Um, oh, actually, before that, I do want to call out. Uh, Corey mentioned um earlier that we do have some um products that have renewals. So say you did pick a product like Zoom that has an annual renewal with TechSoup. You will see when you pick credit card or debit card or electronic check as the, one of the options, you will see at the bottom the option to opt into paying automatically each year. I highly recommend saving the payment information. Um, unless you're not planning on being here or the payment information provided um, you know, is for somebody that only wanted to use their payment information once or it's going to expire within the next year, I recommend doing pay automatically. It really ensures that you don't miss your renewal, um, which can affect like, you know, getting a subscription canceled or move to retail billing, things along those lines. So you don't have to, but I definitely think it makes life easier if you have the pay automatically um, option picked and then just make sure you note it in your company's calendar or send a finance a heads up that next year on this date that you got your fulfillment email and it was fulfilled we should anticipate an automatic charge from TechSoup. Um, when you do have uh, renewals, you will see those appear um, 30 days before your renewal is due. At that time, you can add payment, edit payment, or cancel the renewal if you don't want to continue with the subscription. 
Um, and we do send reminders. They are sent to that organization email. So once again, very important to have that be accurate so that you're getting billing information as well sent to you. Your login email is not CC'd on those emails. So it only goes to the organization email. So something to keep in mind, keep that up to date in your account. Perfect, next slide. So once you've pay, uh, you've checked out, I picked the pay by check option. Um, this is the page that you get. It tells you success. That's how you know it's successful. Um, you'll also see that the um, information for where to mail a check is listed right there in step three. And it has all of your receipt information right there in case you need to print it for an invoice to send to your finance team to approve a check or the payment whatever you chose. Um, but as long as you saw this, it's been, it's, uh, it's gone through and there's that print this page option at the top right corner there, um, right above the, the request number. Um, so for example, with this one, when I checked out here and I picked pay by check, I immediately got an email reminding me that I have to say in payment and called out that I could go back in and add payment if I wanted. So if you accidentally click pay by check, or you don't have your payment information ready to go, and you just want to make sure you request it. Because um, once it's checked out, we do hold that license for you in case it goes out of stock. You can go back in and add payment at any time. And then once payment's added, it's uh, usually fulfilled within three business days. Um, perfect. Next slide, please. So once you've placed the request, as I said, you can add payment if you pick pay by a uh, check. Um, that is underneath your request history in your account. Um, you can either collect, uh, select a date range, which it does automatically only show the request from the last 30 days. So if you've had more requests, um, expand that date range. You'll see all of your requests from your request history. Um, you can also enter the exact request number to locate it. Um, so this one was just placed in the last month. So that's showing from the last month I can add payment or I can cancel it for no charge. Um, so that's a great place to go. Same thing goes for editing payments. Say you check out and you're like, oh no, I used my personal credit card and I wanted to use the, uh, the company credit card. You can go back in and as long as the request hasn't fulfilled yet, you can edit the payment and you can cancel it all, uh, the request altogether and no charges will apply. Once the request is processed and fulfilled, there's no, you can't cancel it anymore and, uh, and can't edit the, or update the payment. So something to keep in mind is, is if you're like, oh gosh, I need to cancel that, or oh gosh, I need to update that payment, go right into your account, go to that request history and uh, take care of it. Uh, sometimes, you know, it might take us a couple business days to get back to you. And if at that point it's fulfilled, the request fulfilled, and we've kind of missed that window to cancel it without um, any charges or anything like that. So good thing to keep in mind. Um, oh, and then one last thing is the request number that I've highlighted there that's in blue. That is a link. So if you click on that, that will open your request details, which next slide, please. So the details for your donation request is your invoice or your receipt, um, depending on what you need. If you need to submit it as an invoice to receive payment or if you need to submit it to your finance for records, this is where you wanna go. You click on that request number, it pulls it up, it tells you the summary, tells you exactly what was charged. Um, you can, there's another cancel option again, you can change the payment options. And once this is fulfilled, it's just a receipt that calls out when it was sent, what email address it went to, all that good stuff. So really great place to go for invoice and receipt information. Um, and it is stored in the, in your account forever. We don't delete these out of your account. You can always find every request um, details that you've ever placed uh, through TechSoup. And again, remember, you got to make sure that organization is active to see that organization's requests. If you've got multiple ones and you have the wrong one selected, you're only going to see that organization's request history. You do need to make sure the correct one's active to see their Request to stream fulfillment emails. Uh, next slide, please. Perfect. So um, that those details, the request uh, history details, um, and then also the fulfillment emails are always sent to the organization email. So as I mentioned before, if that doesn't look right, you'll want to change that one. And it can be different than your login. It does not have to be the same. Um, so you'll want to make sure that that one is up to date and accurate. And that's where we'll send your confirmation emails, which have the request details in it. So it lists off what you were charged, um, or what you will be charged when the 
checks received, all that good stuff. Um, same information is emailed to you as it is stored in the request history. And then fulfillment emails that have your information about how to access your offer are always sent to this email address that's listed here. You access your organization details from your My Account landing page, where we saw the active button to pick. If you select the organization's name, it will pull up this page. You'll see who your authorized agents are, your association code, your qualification status, and then, of course, that um, email address that you can click edit details to edit at any time. Um, and then that will ensure that you get fulfillment and billing emails in the future. Next slide, please. Fulfillment emails are also li uh, listed in your account, just like uh, your request details and your request history. Fulfillment emails, every single one you've ever received, uh, your organization has ever received in their lifetime with TechSoup is listed here. You will see the subject line and the date sent. Um, I've blocked out the name underneath organizations. So they did take an example from um, an active organization's account. Um, but for this, you know, you just click on that TechSoup, your new domain name uh, to open the fulfillment email. And it's the exact same thing that we send to you um, once it's fulfilled. So you either can find it in your inbox or spam, or you can come there and grab it or say it's been a couple of years and you're trying to reinstall something. This is where you'd want to go to find your licensing information, fulfillment information, all that good stuff. Perfect. Uh, next slide, please. So fulfillment emails look tend to look like this. You're going to see that subject line there that says like your Dropbox request number is that through TechSoup. So it usually says your partner name, request, the request number. So that's what you're looking for. Um, we do recommend adding fulfillment at techsoup.org to your um, accepted emails list to ensure you get these emails, but never reply to these emails and never um, send emails to the fulfillment alias. Uh, it's not a monitored uh, inbox, so you won't get a response. You should always go to our contact us page on techsoup.org to check what our current hours are and how to get in touch with us. And again, at the end of this uh, presentation, we will definitely let, uh, go over how to call us or chat with us and all that good stuff. Um, for this offer, this was an access to discounted rates. If you look through it, you'll see that it gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to purchase the discounted subscription. And it has a URL here that has a code that you use to access the discounted rate. Um, this is one of the shorter fulfillment emails we have. Some of them are quite long, then they'll go over um, need more help, support, uh, special contacts, things like that. So just like with everything else, highly recommend thoroughly reading the, the fulfillment emails before getting started. And then if you run into any issues, going back, thoroughly rereading them, see if there's any support information, any articles that might have some more additional walkthrough info, or if there's a special contact you can have. Um, we at TechSoup partner with a lot of different people our uh, companies, and we're not able to become experts on all of the products that we have available. So it's one of those things that I can give you some basic information. I can point out some resources to you, but setting up like Dropbox and then how to use Dropbox, that'd be something you want to ask Dropbox support because they created the product. They're providing the product. Their people are trained to support the product. Um, the products and services on TechSoup are the same on the commercial market as they are on the nonprofit market. Um, there's not like special offers unless specifically called out in the product pages there. Um, pretty much everything's exactly the same. Like there's not a special nonprofit Dropbox version. It's the same that you see on the commercial market. You're just getting a discounted rate. Same with QuickBooks Online, same with Zoom, same exact product everybody on the market uses. It's just, you're getting a better rate than um, a commercial company. Perfect. Uh, next slide, please. So last but not least, just want to go over some important policies um, to keep in mind. Uh, term of use is the first one that I like to point out. Um, as all of you probably, or as many of you know, there's a qualification process that gets gone through. Sometimes we're able to independently verify all of your information and get you qualified. Sometimes we reach out for documents, things like that to confirm some stuff. Um, uh, 
And so with that, you have to remember that that means that only your, that organization that was qualified is eligible to request and use the products because they've actually gone through that rigorous review so that we can make sure that they are eligible. We look at budget, we look at organization type, we look at location, things along those lines. And so that's why you're not allowed to share your account or share your product. So like, if you have a, you know, um, if you've got an organization, you know, somebody else works in another organization, they need to register their own TechSoup account. They can't come through your organization's TechSoup account and place requests for products and services. It's against policy um, since we need to make sure they're eligible as well. Um, that goes also for organizations that have 501c3 departments or, you know, arms um, and then have a commercial company, you know, the commercial company is not eligible to use the things requested through uh, TechSoup unless it's specifically going towards the mission activities of their nonprofit arm. So best to keep um, that in mind. Um, and then also, if you again have any uh, branches that are located outside the U.S., um, more than welcome to join TechSoup. They do need to go through the partner in their country to ensure they're getting the right things and it works. Some of the products are geo-locked, meaning that if you take it outside of the US for too long, it stops functioning. That's usually weeks and months and stuff like that. And you can work with a partner on it, but it's not for permanent use outside of the United States. So there's an issue with functionality, eligibility, and some partners just haven't expanded outside or to other countries or haven't even expanded to the US. So Best to go to your um, the country's website for your organization and see what's available and get going there. Um, if you do go to techsoup.global, there's a great drop down where you can pick the country that you need. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, lots of folks uh, missed up here. You you know if we find that this happened, we'll just help you get things sorted. Um, we just ask you to try to be mindful, but we know mistakes happen, so just try to keep this and um, just try to keep this in mind. Next side, please. And we're almost done here. Um, refunds and exchanges. So generally, there's a pretty strict no refunds and no exchanges allowed for offers acquired through TechSoup. Um, that's why we really encourage you to make sure you review all the information or contact us for any follow-up and questions before you place a request. Um, it's not every single program has that. Um, some do have some wiggle rooms like Microsoft, for example, they allow up to 30 days for a refund. Um, but some um, partners have made it that you can't refund, period. Um, you know, once we've sent out the license, once we've sent out the coupon code, you know, there's not a way for us to get it back. And a lot of partners only give us a certain number of licenses, products, et cetera, per year. Um, and they want to make sure that we're, they're not their licenses and stuff aren't getting wasted by someone you know something getting requested realizing I, you don't want it or you're not going to use it and then nobody gets to use it it's just kind of a wasted license out there so that's why there's usually no refunds no exchanges however mistakes happen you are more than welcome to contact us at client services and we'll let you know what the policy is for that particular product or program uh we'll escalate it if we have to you know if it's a strict no 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 We'll let you know that as well, but happy to answer those questions. Happy to look into it for you, but really try to make sure you know what you want and are confident in what you want before you check out. Perfect. Um, I did see one question uh, that came in that was, why is it, is it so hard to redeem some TechSoup discounts? Um, so uh, one thing to keep in mind is this, we, these are nonprofit programs. So they're not a typical reseller program. And that means that sometimes the fulfillment or accessing of the discount or donated product is a little more difficult than a commercial reseller because it's a unique program that's had to be created between TechSoup and that partner. Some are really straightforward, really smooth. Some are a little more convoluted. Um, and it's unfortunately just the nature of the beast with the nonprofit sector is, you know, we're dropping the bucket compared to what their support's doing. So sometimes when you call their support, they're assuming it's the same process as a reseller or as a um, commercial market kind of thing. And it's not. So, you know, it's just, we ask for patience. It's usually great savings. 
Um, you know, but unfortunately it's just the nature of the beast sometimes, but we're always looking to improve. If you ever have any feedback you want to send us, please feel free to reach out. Um, we have the forums forums is a great place to post feedback. Our program managers go through those all the time. That's underneath one of the, uh, the community drop down that Corey highlighted earlier. Um, so, uh, so yes, definitely can, uh, it's, it can be a little frustrating sometimes with certain things, and we just appreciate your patience and understanding with it. That's kind of nature of the beast, as I've said three times now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and I believe that is my last slide. I know that we had a question about boost in our Q&A that we said we would look at. Um, oh, uh, I do have one other question. So uh, Jim Connor asked, um, how do I change my name with... Uh, in my TechSoup account. So there is a couple things that you can't change yourself. We have to verify it to ensure everything's uh, good to go. One of the th things is the name. So your organization name, if you've changed your organization name, we're happy to update it. Um, we'll take, uh, we can try to independently confirm that ourselves, or we might ask you for some documentation. Um, just reach out to client services and we will be able to assist you with updating your account. Uh, budget's another one that you usually can't update. It's tied to eligibility, as is organization type. So if there's ever something that's um, grayed out that you're not able to edit, just reach out to us and happy to uh, get that going for you. Um, and then I do know that we had a question from Donna about, can you talk about Boost and what considerations to look at when choosing products? Um, so I did respond to that and point out that we do have the Boost catalog that is underneath um, services. You'll see Boost. If you click on that, it'll take you a landing page that goes through um, all of the different uh, information about the Boost membership. Basically, what it boils down to is TechSoup Boost members get better savings. They have a special Boost catalog where some of the offers are even more significantly discounted than they already are in the a regular catalog. So I did put a link in there as well for uh, the catalog if anyone's interested. Um, along with getting access to this special catalog, you are given a coupon code that can be applied at um, checkout for TechSoup that you can use for requesting products from the regular catalog. And I believe it's a $25 coupon right now. Um, but definitely, some members think it's totally worthwhile. I recommend going and looking at the catalog to see how many offers you're interested in. Um, so definitely um, check that out. Um, you can always reach out again to client services if you have any follow-up questions. Um, but it is a it's basically extra savings for certain products that have been added to that special catalog. Um, let's see here. We also. Perfect. Oh, great. See, Donna, that worked for you. Awesome. Um, if you have, so GoDaddy and Microsoft um, don't have a relationship and we don't have a relationship with GoDaddy. So unfortunately, there's not much support we can uh, provide for working with GoDaddy to switch things over. However, that being said, um, we definitely have a cloud uh, services provider team that works specifically with Microsoft. And I can drop in where you can um, submit a consultation form. Um, highly recommend connecting with them. They're experts. They can help you with picking the right Microsoft 365 cloud-based products. They might have some insights on um, how to work with, uh, you know, how to get things moved over. Um, GoDaddy, though, we don't talk to them directly. They don't really respond to us since they don't have a relationship with us or Microsoft. But let me get that um dropped in here for your CSP is the acronym for it. One second. Come back link. Let's see. While Kelly's doing that, and when you close your window, there's going to be a survey that pops up. Please um, take a moment and fill out the survey. It's just two questions. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Perfect. Yes. So there's a CSP consultation form. I highly recommend anyone that's interested in cloud-based Microsoft products, go and fill out this consultation form. It's an expert team that focuses exclusively on the Microsoft cloud products. Client services, we know a lot of different things, but we're not experts on that like they are. So they're going to be able to talk to you, make some recommendations. They also do um, 
can help you pick out the right stuff. Client services, a lot more kind of a general customer service experience. We're not in-depth product trained. We're not IT trained, things along those lines. But for Microsoft Cloud, we've got a dedicated team for that, which is great. Um, and then I see any other questions? We've got one minute left before um, we end here. Um, oh, I see our staff and volunteers and organization allowed to purchase via TechSoup for personal use. For the most part, no. However, there are certain partners that have um, offers that have a friends and family plan. I believe like Lenovo's access to uh, a discounted catalog is one of those where it actually has it, but it will be called out specifically on the TechSoup product page if that's an option. And then also would be mentioned in your fulfillment email as well. But the idea with this is that your TechSoup's here to support an organization's mission and activities. So that only that organization should be requesting products and services to support their mission activities. If that if a partner has expanded it to friends and family stuff, that's great and it will be called out, but this but anything received through here should not be resold. It should not be purchased for say you're doing a fundraiser and you want to do a uh a raffle. You can't raffle this stuff off. You can't give it away. You can't transfer it. You can't donate it to an individual for personal use, you know, to like that for the most part. But again, just read the product pages and the details and it will let you know if there is that option. They're few and far between, but there are a handful that do offer that. And this, uh, I see will session will be available later for to review. Yes. Um, we do follow up with an email. Um, it usually takes about a day or two, but you will get a copy of this recording, the transcript, um, and also the slide deck. We also have underneath where uh, Corey highlighted earlier, the um, underneath resources, there's events and webinar archive where you can go in to find past webinars you didn't sign up for or you did. And we also have a YouTube page where these are posted as well. Awesome. No worries, Candice. Well, glad you could make it. Glad everyone could make it. Um, you know, it's a great thing to reference back to. Really enjoy having everybody and being able to share this. Um, Corey or anyone else, anything you want to share or add? Any questions we think we missed? Nothing to add, but uh, Monday through Friday, we're here for you uh, using the options on the screen right now. You can call us or you can chat with us. And when we're not here, and click help on the landing page of the techsoup.org website and go to the uh, external knowledge base for answers. Awesome. And I did just drop our contact us um, landing page that has this information too. You know, if you're ever on techsoup.org and scroll to the bottom there underneath get in touch, there is contact us. Always has our current hours and um, contact pathways. So a great place to go if you're like, wait, what, what time were they open? When are phones there? Great place to go to double check as well. And yeah, just a reminder if there's any last minute questions, that's great. I think we got everything though. So thank you so much, everybody.